Hello and welcome to this tutorial. My name is Frederik Steinmetz for BlenderDiplom.com and today I'd like to talk about the mask modifier. Now in my eyes the mask modifier is mainly useful in the viewport, not so much in the final render, but last time I said that YouTube got angry and of course you people were right. This modifier also has its merit in the final render, but I mostly use it for modeling. So let's see what I mean with that by adding a mask modifier and our object's gone. The reason why it's gone is the mask modifier doesn't do anything without a vertex group except for by default hide everything that's not in the vertex group. So right now we don't have a group so everything is hidden because everything is not in the group. If we switch the direction everything is there again uh, but let's first create the vertex group. I'm going to just press plus here and name it mask. Now if I go back into edit mode you can see the vertices here are selected. And if I press assign all these vertices will have a weight of 1. Now if I go back out from edit mode and I choose my mask here my cube becomes a wireframe. Now this kind of confused me the first time I did this but it's actually not a bug. The reason why this became a wireframe is if you look at this, there is no face selected. There are no vertices selected that form an entire face. So all that's left by the mask modifier is actually those edges. And my personal preference is to switch this because I actually want the vertices that are masked, that are selected here, to be hidden. By default the vertices that you don't select are hidden. Absolutely personal preference but I just prefer it that way and it's just one click away. So why not? So now we have the insides of my cube in plain view and we can check if there are any problems. In object view mode it doesn't look like there are but once I go into edit mode you can clearly see I messed up here. And if this object was a little more complex then I would probably not get around the mask modifier. And also if you have a room that's one piece and you want to hide one wall while editing the rest of your model you can just hide individual walls with the mask modifier. Let's have a look at the threshold. If I go back into edit mode into vertex select mode and I'm going to select all these and change the weight down to 0 0.5 and I assign them nothing happens and that's because the threshold is below my 0 0.5. But once I move this you can see as soon as I hit 0 0.5 everything is there again because there is no vertex with a weight less than 0 0.5 here. So basically you can give every vertex a different weight of course otherwise the weights wouldn't make too much sense. So I'm just going to give this backside a weight of 0 0.25. I'm going to move this below the threshold of 0 0.5 and the vertices that were not assigned those stay and as soon as I hit the threshold where none of the vertices is above and the entire thing gets visible again. Now that's uh, pretty straightforward. Let's have a look at a function which is actually only accessible in viewport. I dare you YouTube. <laughs> Just kidding. If I make a mistake please feel free to let me know in the comments. But for this we need an object with an armature. So here it is. That's my armature and that's my object. Now going to lower the viewport resolution. There we go. That's my bat. And I can drill down all this stuff. We don't need it. But I'm going to add a mask modifier to it. I'm going to put it to armature mode because that's what I want to be talking about. And I'll just eye drop select the armature. And now most of my object is gone. Except parts of the face. Now how do we decide which parts of the object model we want to display and which not? We need to go and click on the armature and then press control tab to get into pose mode. You can also use this drop down. And in pose mode we can select individual bones and rotate and scale and move them. That's what pose mode is for. But you can see as soon as I select one of the bones parts 
of the model around the bone become visible. And that is because the mask modifier will, will dynamically mask out all the vertices that are not in the group of the bone. And if you want, also mask out all the vertices that are in the group, but also are below a certain threshold. You can see right here, of course, I painted a gradient on these so we don't have this very stiff movement. You always need some sort of gradient. And if I go out of armature mode, select this, and let's go into weight paint mode so we can see. Select the armature first, then select your object with shift, go into control tab, into weight paint mode. And now you can see those are the vertex groups. Where it's blue, the weight is very, very low, and where it's red, it's the highest. So if I have this body bone selected, it's my shoulder plates. I should have taken another one where I didn't make a spelling mistake, but hey, why not? And if I now increase the threshold, you can see individual faces disappearing until I'm all the way up and everything's gone. So this is really handy if you want to display parts of your object and only want to affect the vertices that actually belong to the bone already. Or maybe you want to quickly check if you made a mistake and there's some faces over there that definitely don't belong here. You can just click through the bones. And if you render this, then either Blender will go with the last bone you selected. And I think in object mode, it's even kind of random. So there we go. That's a feature that I think is only for refining your meshes even though I get a little anxious saying that. Anyways, just in case I now infuriated too many people, let's have a look at one where it's actually, you can't go around the mask modifier even in editing. So let's have a look. This is my object and it has a cloth simulation on it, followed by a subdivision surface modifier. And if you're not familiar with this, those are sous and you can use them to Pull cloth together, which is really handy. And it's part of the simulation. So basically, if you have a cloth simulation, every edge that's not that doesn't belong to a face is considered a sous. If I run the simulation, you can see it pulls together the cloth right where the sous are. But the subdivision surface modifier, but the subdivision surface modifier sort of interacts with these sous. Now this used to be a lot worse, and this is when I actually came up with that trick I'm about to show you, they pretty much fixed this. So it's not entirely necessary anymore. But I still want to show you how I fixed this back in the days, because there might as well be another situation uh, where this comes in handy. Now, of course, I can't delete these because they're part of the simulation. So even after the simulation is gone, I can't delete them because then I change the number of vertices and that messes up the situation in hindsight but I can put a mask modifier behind the cloth simulation. And this way I would of course be able to hide these shoes after I'm done with the simulation. So let's just quickly select these and go over here. And I'm going to delete this group, create a new group and whatever weight you want, it's fine. Assign and use the mask right here. And of course, invert it as always. Now the mask is below the subdivision surface modifier, so it's not much use. Let's drag it up above it. And you can see the behavior of your mesh changes. Not as drastically as it used to, but it does change. So you can see if you're going for this effect and you don't want the invisible sous to affect your render, then you actually need the mask modifier in render. So let me give you one example that was suggested for me by our viewers Let's say you have a character and you have different clothes modeled for it, but you find out that for some of the jackets, the elbows poke out of the jacket, but you don't want to remodel the character or delete any of its faces. The keyword is non-destructive workflow here. Then you can just go ahead and put the entire arms into a vertex group, mask that out so there's no risk of those limbs poking through your jackets and sweaters. And also you save yourself a couple of faces in render. So that would be a situation where you actually use the mask modifier for rendering. So that's it about the mask modifier. I hope you learned something here. And as always, please do try this at home.
If you think you've learned something from this video, please go ahead and hit that like button. If you want to see more videos of this kind, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel. And if you're interested in cycles whatsoever, please consider buying our book. It contains all the information about every node, as well as a lot of tips about performance, denoising, and so on.